So welcome to the Hour of Code 2022 Escape Estate. We've set this up for um, students from secondary schools, but uh, feel free to join in if you're from primary schools as well. There's absolutely no problem there. So who's going to be uh, taking you through this Hour of Code today? Uh, my name's Stephen Payne. I work with the uh, Microsoft team and I'm based in Western Australia the uh, beautiful land of the Wadjuk people of the Noongar Nation. And I'm pleased to guide you through this lesson today. And I've got a great colleague joining me, uh, Andrew. Uh, have you got a microphone with you today? I certainly do. Lovely to be here to support Stephen Payne, who's going to do an amazing job at Hour of Code. And I'm coming to you live from Newcastle, which is the Awabagul land, which we pay our respects to past and present elders as well. Lovely to be here, Stephen. Fantastic, thank you. So Andrew, feel free to jump in um, to correct me or to give your views as we go through. And Andrew will also be keeping an eye on the, the Q&A. It'll be great to know where you're joining us from today. So um, if you have got access to the Q&A panel, maybe just let us know which, which school or which state you're joining us from. That would be great to know. Uh, so at any time, you can click the Q&A uh, button if you want to ask any questions. You can bring this up full screen if you're looking at it in a in a classroom. You've got captions and you can also pause and rewind. And there'll be a few times today where I'll ask you to pause the activity and try something out yourself or have a discussion in your classroom. Um, and you can pause, you can go rewind and fast forward at any time. So we are live, but um, feel free to pause and we'll also uh, address your questions as we go through. Great stuff. So what are we going to learn today? We're going to use computational thinking to solve puzzles. We're going to do quite a lot of debugging and we're going to solve some problems. So some will involve co code, some will involve lateral thinking, but there's lots of fun things to explore today. So we just need to make sure that you've got all the skills you need before we actually dig into Minecraft. So what do you need? Well, with any kind of digital technologies challenge, you need to use computational thinking. So I'm going to very quickly just go through the, um, the basics of computational thinking and how that might apply in Minecraft, and then we will be good to go. So what is it and why does it matter? So there's four little items at the bottom. I'm sure you know what they are if you've been playing Minecraft um, before. What do you do? You know them, Andrew? I know the first, the third, and the fourth, but the second icon. Uh, oh, I mean, I know what it is. <laughs> do I know what it's called? I don't think so. Okay, cool. That's pretty good. Three out of four, especially for a grown-up. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Um, <laughs> So we are looking about using uh, an approach to problem solving using specific skills. And these are the four skills we're going to look at today. Decomposition, pattern recognition, abstraction and algorithms. And I'm going to try and um, give you some ideas. You can uh, go back to this if you need to or pause it or screenshot it. But what is decomposition? So it's all about breaking a problem down into smaller parts. So in this case, we're using the glass block to show that it's it's broken down into smaller parts. So getting ready for school. You've got to do this, you've got to do that, you've got to get that, you've got to eat that, you've got to drink that, you've got to brush that, and then you're ready for school. It's lots of different parts, but we've got to break it down or we'd be overwhelmed. So in Minecraft, for example, building a roller coaster, you've got to do a lot of stuff before you can get uh, a roller coaster working. You've got to get materials, you've got to build a station, you might need to add some redstone. There's quite a lot you need to do. So that's mm. what the composition is. Now, this one, pattern recognition. So this is about finding similarities in ideas and objects. Let's see what we've, I bet you know if, if Andrew doesn't. We are using the spyglass. <laughs> there you go. Spyglass, that's what it is. And Stephen, uh, you have the lovely School of Isolated and Distance Education in Perth and I said, hey, telecommunications, say hello. And I bet they know what it is, which means I need to up my game a little bit, I think. I reckon. So let's think about the cycle of a day and night. One day sounds nice and straightforward, but 
we need to think about the, the repeating pattern. So the Earth is continually rotating, even though we can't feel it. So it's looking for patterns in the real world. So you've got exploding creepers, of course, in Minecraft. That's probably the most famous thing about creepers. And we know they're going to um, explode because they start flashing. So we can recognize that pattern and know to get away from them. So that's the sort of thing, recognizing patterns and helping that with our future choices. OK, so the third one is abstraction and that is all about filtering the details that you don't need and focusing on what's essential so in this case we're using the pickaxe because that reminds us to pick out the most important information so an example might be um, baking bread we need to provide the ingredients for the bread but we don't need to know how the oven is working to bake the bread we need to know what we need to do but we don't need to know all the technical stuff in the background Although I know <laughs> Andrew, for example, wants to know how everything works all the time. Of course, 100%. That's all. That's my kinesthetic learning process. And I know students out there are just like me. Now I want a spyglass spy to say that, um, which will look really cool in movies too. That's the one that folds in, doesn't it? Like retracts in and then you, you fold it Absolutely. out. That's excellent. So here's another example. We know that to if we plant a, sap, a sapling, we need we need to know that it's got to be in a place where there's sunlight and there's enough space. But we don't need to know when we're playing Minecraft all the coding that happens in the background. So that's an example of abstraction. And then the final one that you use right from when you first start learning to code in primary school algorithms. It's a series of steps to complete a task. So you might have an algorithm for um, writing a program. You might have it for going about a, a daily task. And we're going to use the crafting table to remind us to craft a set of instructions. So in the real world, making a sandwich, you need to get the, uh, the bread, get the butter, get the ingredients. Um, and you've got to do it in the right order or you end up with with jam on the outside of your bread and uh, all sorts of things. So in Minecraft, an example might be building a house. There's lots of different ways you can build a house, but you need to give instructions, particularly if you're using coding to build a house. If you if you code your um, algorithm correctly, then you'll get all of the great uh, answers. So those are the I'm four sorry. things that we What's need to remember. What's wrong with jam on the outside of your sandwich? I think that's a good idea. <laughs> that's yeah, a good idea. Uh, now we don't try it. <laughs> uh, computational thinking then. We've got these skills, or you can definitely pause the game and, uh, and go back to those. So with those skills, we can go and explore today's challenge for Hour of Code. Fantastic. So I'm just going to play a short video that will kind of set the scene, and then we'll go in and um, explore the activities. Getting stuck can be scary. But with code, we can find a way to solve so many problems. Minecraft Hour of Code invites you to the escape estate for a new challenge. puzzles in each room using blocks or python code your way out by dawn to earn a million emeralds and discover the power of computational thinking everyone's invited download minecraft education edition and do an hour of code today Fantastic. So uh, hopefully you have got Minecraft Education Edition installed, ready to go. Otherwise, you can pause the video and get that installed right now. Um, so this is one big escape estate made up of lots of different escape rooms. So let's just quickly remind ourselves of what an escape room is. Uh, you may have done this uh, in 
in the wild, in, in real rooms where you've got to solve clues and complete puzzles and try and get from one class, uh, one room to the next. You may have done it in school where you've had to solve, solve puzzles and undo locks and that sort of thing. So all we're doing here is we're going to work our way through a series of tasks uh, in this uh, room. So it's a really, really fun um, escape room challenge. There are actually three different pathways you can go down, green, yellow and red. Uh, we're going to go through green today because that's the quickest one. But if you want to go back and try yellow and red and you end up doing a lot more puzzles um, and you trying out a lot more different um, aspects of coding, you're welcome to do that as well. Um, Andrew, have you done this? challenge yet i have you know i was so excited to to go through the escape estate i love last year's uh time craft hour of code so uh, let's face it i wanted to win the million gems uh that they advertised there haven't quite got there just yet there's a few things that you know i, I don't want to look up hints or anything like that that i'm solving through so i'm trying to do some of my own python coding and solve puzzles but i haven't escaped yet not yet Excellent. So let's see how we get on today. So um, you do need to have, we are going to do this live in Minecraft Education Edition. If you've got a, an account through your school or through your um, college, you can just log straight in with your school email address. Even if you don't have a Minecraft account or a Microsoft account, you can install Minecraft and then right down the bottom, there's a little icon or a little sentence that says, if you don't have an account, try a demo lesson. So even if you're not licensed, you can play a demo lesson. So I'm just going to ask you to uh, make sure you're logged in uh, and then I'm going to take you through how to find the hour of code and how to get started. So I'll just pause or you can pause while you um, get yourselves ready. So log into Minecraft or click um, or click the little link saying there's a demo activity and. We are done, so. I've logged in here and I'm going to go and find the escape estate. So you can either um, go into the library and just type in escape estate or you can go and find it in the computer science lessons. And then once we're logged in, we can create the world and we're ready to go. So it's only 3.9 meg. They've crammed an awful lot of cool stuff into that 3.9 meg, but it should load nice and quickly. So once it's um, loaded, you'll find this screen here. Welcome to Hour of Code 2022. And there is a short tutorial. Um, there are two different tutorials, depending on whether you're using keyboard or touch. And the reason we've added this in here is sometimes you might be used to using uh, Minecraft on a on a switch or an Xbox at home um, or an iPad and you're using a laptop at school. So you might you may be using a keyboard or touch when you're not used to it. So it's it's useful just to remind ourselves of the different um, instructions. So once you get to the, the screen, you are ready to go. And I'm actually going to go through the uh, tutorial. And um, so feel free to pause and go through the tutorial yourself, or you might want to just fast forward through this little bit. Um, but I always think it's fun to try out the uh, tutorial. There's always some really nice graphics. So I'm going to give this a go now. And um, Andrew, chime in uh, with your thoughts as we start off the tutorial. Absolutely. And I, I do want to really emphasize that if you are in a classroom right now and you're working with kids or kids need more time, remember these events are designed, as Stephen said, for you to pause, rewind and watch it again. Or maybe the kids are about to do Stephen's activity. Make sure you do hit the pause button at the front of the screen to make sure they don't get overwhelmed with uh, at pace. OK, so they are pause and play events that we like to advertise them as. Thanks, Stephen. Thank you. So here we go. We just have to move our mouse around to look at the different uh, images and then we're good to go. And we're just reminding ourselves about how to move with the keyboard. So W to move forward, D to move right. I still haven't quite got this right. I always fiddle around a bit. Um, and there we go. I'm going to jump as well with the space bar. 
there will be a little bit of jumping today. So there we go. I've complete completed the tutorial. OK. Um, H You've done it before. <laughs> I have done it before. And just a reminder, H at any time, you can click on H and you get the controls. So right click the characters and if you need some extra help with reading, you can bring up the immersive reader at any time and you can listen back to any of the text. Uh, you can also resize that. So if you need slightly bigger text or a different color background, you can set that up and you can have it read back to you or you can read it more clearly. So I'm going to go and it's going to take us into the house and I have done this before and this is quite exciting this little bit. Whoa! <laughs> it's grabbing me into the house. There we go. So this is a, a really key thing throughout the game. You are going to look for shining particles. So there are some really great hints that allow you to um, find what you need. So we're going to start off with the first room, the attic. What you need to do to start with is pay attention to the gold particles. They'll provide you some assistance on what to look for or where to go. I've done this a few times and and even after doing it, I think three or four times, I've still missed things and each time I play it, I, I find something new. So um, what I'm going to ask you to do is if you've gone into the um, first room, the attic, uh, you want to, I'm going to give you some time to try and get out of the attic yourselves. So feel free to pause or if you'd like to go along with me, um, I'm going to actually walk through that myself. So the first thing I do is I click on the note and there are 10 missing pages. So throughout this world, I have to go and find these different pages of a diary and they've all got hints in. So if I find those, they can actually help me with the activity. So I've got my first note and I'm looking for particles. Ah, so I like this my... element, Stephen, of exploration. And as Stephen said, the immersive reader button is there for those students that need learning needs. Or if you just like myself and just like to use the immersive reader button so I can process the information, do that as well. But yes, the, the little glitter around on the floor does help, doesn't it, Stephen? Absolutely. It really does, especially for um especially for someone like me that needs needs things kind of flashing so I can find them. I'm not great at finding hidden clues, but when they're flashing, it's nice and easy. So we um, when we first um, encounter the agent who we are going to code throughout this uh, activity, we're asked to choose between blocks and Python. So blocks is the, the standard um, block based coding that you might have experienced in Scratch. And Python is is great if you've used Python before, but also it's simple enough that you can pick up and ad adapt it as you'll see I do um, in this session here. So um, I'm going to launch the code builder and read through the tutorial. So the first thing I've got to do is move the cursor on the floor so that it's open so that it's over the trapdoor. So I've moved it forward two blocks, but I needed to move it forward three. So this is the idea of debugging. We're given some code that's almost right or is has got some of the elements we need and we just need to change it or add to it. So I know that um, I don't want to move the cursor two blocks forward. I'm just going to copy and paste move cursor orange. And then I can move forward three places and open the door and then I think I've completed the activity. One, two, three, trap door opens. Oh. No, I still can't get out because <laughs> I haven't told the agent to move out, so I've still got one more thing to do. Here we go. I love that you've just debugged yourself. <laughs> I know I'm de skill. debugging myself, debugging the uh, activities. So now I need to get the agent to move up. And to actually get out of that trapdoor he's in, I think he needs to move up too. So my code is agent move up. And then I just copy that again, and then he's going to move up two spots. So the great thing about all of these is you might have done this in a totally different way to, to mine. The same effect 
but with a different um, a different way of coding it. And we're going to explore that as we go through today. So we've explored and we've made our way out of that world. So if we just um, let the agent escape and then follow the path, we are going down the green path. So we've got a range of rooms. Some will be you'll need code to solve the puzzles. And sometimes you don't need to use code. All you've got to do is keep your eye out for the clues and the particles. So what we've done there is um, we followed the green path, but you would have noticed the agent said you could change um, to another path. It doesn't just give you another path. You have to solve more puzzles in the attic. So the yellow, uh, if you want to do the yellow path, you've got to solve two more puzzles in the attic. And if you want to do the red path, you've got to solve um, three more. So we're just going to do green today and I'll leave the rest for you to um, explore. And I love that it's a pick a path experience, right? So if you'd like to do more coding, maybe challenge yourself, you'd start to take that yellow or red path. Absolutely. So I'm going to ask you to have fun and good luck. And don't forget your computational thinking skills. We've got our glass block, our spyglass, our pickaxe and our crafting table. So if we keep those in mind, we should be really, um, really quick at finding our way around. So where we finished off was the study. So this is room two. If you've done the, oh, I can see a, a page from my missing diary already right in front of me. Now, um, you might want to pause now and go and try the uh, study. And I'm going to show you how I did it and uh, maybe get a little bit of help from Andrew as well. So I think there's three puzzles to solve in the study. Pause the video and then come back and see how I did it. I'm just going to go through the uh, study and just tell you, walk you through the different activities. So I'm sure you will have will have found them by now. So the first one you have to do is move the clay ball from its current position to the gold block. So we've got mm. a, a clay ball, nice gentle one to start with. We've got to move it up, move it right and bring it back down. So the code we're given um, is uh, I think moving it left. So we just need to realize that it's moving right instead of left. And the code is all um, included inside the, um, the coding block. The second one, which you will have explored is the um, mirror. This is a little bit trickier. We're not using coding here. We've got a spot that the in the mirror, there are two lights that are on and one light that is off. And we just need to correct that in our in the real room that we're in. So we've got to go and turn off or on one of the lamps. So a little bit of thinking involved there. Not no coding, but just a little bit of spotting what's happening in the mirror. And then the final one we need to do is match up the pumpkins. So in our world, we've got three pumpkins above the fire, but in the mirror, there are four. So if we go into the code, we'll see that the code is written to move the cursor left, but only place three blocks. So what we need to do is put in the code to place a block at the start and place a block at the end. And if you've done that, then you are um, you are well on your way through this task. And then you know, I like I actually like that you're not showing the video in this one, Stephen, <laughs> because you showed the video in the first one. Yeah, and they followed through. They paused and played. This one, you're actually upping the challenge a little bit. So you're describing it, and they will have to go through and work it out themselves. And of course, they have their teachers in the room that can help them. OK, and this is what I need your help with, Andrew. So the final um, task. We have to we have to pull four levers to get out of this room. But we're not quick enough, so we need to use this little character here who's called the Speedy Knight to help us. So having a look at that, can you see any clues that might tell us the order to open the blocks? Which levers do we need to click in which order? What do you reckon, Andrew? Well, I'm looking at the floor at the moment, and I think the floor might give me a nice little visual indicator that I can see. If I'm referring to counting in this regard, for example, um, 
I'd probably experiment with the blue one first because it's got one, and then probably ah. move to two, three, and four, technically. Well spotted. Thank you. Well spotted. So that is the uh, study. Now, if we complete that, and I think we can figure that out with the code, then the next room is my favorite room. I'm feeling pretty hungry here. And I think looking around, there's plenty of stuff to do in the kitchen. So um, well done on making it to the kitchen. You might want to explore the three puzzles in the, the kitchen now, uh, and then I'll go through them uh, with Andrew. Um, in a moment. So pause the video now if you want to go and explore the kitchen and then come back and see how me and Andrew did it. OK. So we're going to go and find the zombie chef. What's he saying, Andrew, do you think? I love it, the zombie chef. Absolutely love that. The zombie with the chef face. <laughs> Same bread. There we go. So we've got to make some bread, it looks like, and it looks like there's a an algorithm on the side. We've got some wheat, but I don't know what the other things are. Is it a grinder? Ah. Oops. Ah, yes. And this is interesting. There's exclusive items, isn't there, in, uh, in this era of code, which I found really cool. So he's going to get the wheat. And then make the dough. He can't make the dough yet. See that that big red no entry sign. So we've done the we've got the code wrong. So then we go back and debug it. So before we can make the dough, we've got to mill the wheat. That's the bit that we're missing. So I've just copy and paste. I don't need to type it all in. Let me try it now. Oh, ho, ho. Want to set the kitchen on fire. Puzzle solved, and he's there he is holding a, a bit of bread. Excellent. Oh, there's a lot more zombie chefs now. So this must be the second puzzle. What does this tell us? <laughs> I love the, the animation. House is hungry. <laughs> right. So we've got to feed the house apples, mushroom stew, and what was the other one? Salmon. And now we're introducing the idea of loops as well. So rather than writing feed the house apple and putting that four times, we can just put that once. And it tells it. If I is in the range from one to four, then it will feed the house an apple. So I've written four I in range four, but I'm changing it to three because I can spot on the screen. That I need three apples. There's three chefs with apples. Um, there are, is it four with salmon? Yep. And then I'm going to make sure that my code is lined up. And my commands are indented and I need to delete the rest. There we go. Ah, nothing's happened. Oh, debug time. What have I done wrong, Andrew? I love how you can bring up the code and then debug it by checking. Ah, I wrote or instead of four. There we go. Let's try it now. Let's keep an eye on the uh, on the house. Oh, there we go. The apples are going in, the salmon, the stew. And now the house is eating what I've given it. That's cool animation, isn't it? OK, we've got a whole bunch of different I love characters watching here. How this has been designed. It's so cool. Just watching it's all really the characters. Cool. It's real rewarding when you do the coding correctly to see what happens next. Oh, so they've been given the wrong plates and we need to slide them along the edges of the table. So we can swap the plates. So I'm going to try this. Swap the plates, orange and blue. That's my code. And we'll see above their heads, we've got two ticks and two no way. 
So now we can code it again. It looks like we just need to switch the um, magenta one at the back. So I'm just going to change that. Um, so magenta, the, the pinky color, and so that should do it. Oh, only one right. I think it probably reset reset it. So I had to start from the scratch, start from scratch. So I'm going to put that back in orange, blue, then magenta. Let's try that. Oh, <laughs> that, that is really rewarding. <laughs> their food. Yes. I like it. What room next? That's it. That's 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 the question, isn't it? It makes it really appealing to see where do we go from the kitchen? Are we just, do we keep climbing up? We're going to search for particles and we are now entering the parlor. So there's some looks like there's some fun games in here. Um, now I'm uh, full up with all of my bread that I've been eating. I can go and do some after dinner games. So again, you might want to go and explore the parlor yourself. So pause here and then um, I'll go through this if you want to go along with us. So pause. Welcome back. So this is really fun. I'm going to go and explore here. Go down the steps, not just jump over the side. And I'm going straight for the particles this time. No messing around. Something's going to happen. There we go. We've got a big piece of chess. What piece is that? Do we know? I'm not a chess player. Oh, let's see here. Wait, the, that that is a that's a witch on a broomstick, isn't it? Oh no, <laughs> no, it's not. No. Sorry. <laughs> it is a chess piece. It looks like it just may be upside down. Maybe. Ah, so I'm just trying that little code and it's pushing. So the different colors are pushing left, right, down and up. So it looks quite simple to solve that. I've got to push up. Uh, no, push left, then push up and then push right. I think they've made not luckily they've made it nice and simple for us. So we can just copy the um, copy the bits of code we need. So we're going to push left, push up, and then push right. I think that does it. I'm trying to do it within my in my brain, moving moving everything around. Yay! Ah, uh, it's the king. Of course, it's the king. Puzzle solved. Oh, <laughs> spinning around. The king has taken the bishop. Ah, oh, so we. We've got a, a more involved game here. Oh, I missed my page. I can go back for that. Right click the particles. The queen's up there. I like how it gives me hints or I'd be looking around forever. Me too. The hints, I, I find this to be the most visual and easiest error of code yet. Here we go. So I've got to make a staircase to get to the top of the bookcase. So we're moving the cursor around, okay. Yeah, orange, yellow, magenta, blue. And then we're placing a block. So let's run the, the code and then debug it. So I'm obviously not gonna be able to get up to the queen on that very shallow staircase. Uh, I've also again got the idea of um, loops. And that just does it the same, but with a little less code. Yeah, I'm not very fast at this. I reckon a lot of people playing along with us would have already done this by now. OK, I'm going to do this. I'm going to keep that because I want that as the foundation of my staircase. Tell me what you think about my. Um, my method in a moment, um, Andrew, because I don't think this is the best way of doing it. <laughs> but I but I'm gonna... think any way that you learn is a great way. And, and you know, looking at the glitter where it kind of makes the shapes gives you a really good idea too on uh, how you should code the staircase moving forward, which is cool. 
very cool. I didn't even notice that. I was just doing my own thing. So. <laughs> it's so visual that, you know, coding has never been easier, especially Python so, because of the visualization. So look what I'm doing here. I'm moving along four, then I'm going to move up one. And then I'm going to move, put three on top of that. Look at this funny staircase that I've done. Oh, it didn't even, it's even gone out of the, uh, no, that looks pretty cool. And now I can just jump at the end. I don't need to get a staircase all the way. I can jump up that. Oh, there we go. What do you think? Cheating or all good? All good. All good. Puzzle solved. Brilliant. So now the queen takes the rook. Ah, the queen's birthday, May the 4th. That mean anything to you? A little bit to me. It should mean something to you. <laughs> May the 4th. There's my diary. I should have read that when I first came in the room. That might have given me some hints. So I've got to remember that May the 4th. So we've got here numbers and months. So we need to move the queen to May the 4th from January the 5th. Where do we move the king? Maybe I missed something. Is that the king over there? Or was that the queen? I can't remember where they were. Oh, that's the queen. I've already been there. I need a map. There we go. April the 1st. I can remember that. So you'll notice I put the picture to the left of my screen so I can see the code at the same time. Have you noticed I've been doing that? I think that's a very smart way of doing it, to be honest. So we need to move the queen. Four across and one up, but the king's in the way, so maybe we move the king first. Four in the orange direction and one in the blue. So I'm just going to very simply change what's already there. So without doing any loops, I'm just going to add that line. And then with the queen, it'll be similar. I'm going to copy both those lines. And I think that's it. I reckon uh, other people could do it in a lot fewer lines of code than I've done. That was quite uh, clumsy, but I got the job done and that's what it's all about. Yay, I have cleared. Well done. The room. Now. Is that it? I've cleared the green path, so I think that's the end of the activity. Hello again. It looks like you did it. Oh, hello. Hang on. Oh. Rascal. Do you remember? Do you remember Rascal from last year's challenge? I do. I do. Timecraft. They're back. Rascal. I thought we'd banish them forever. <laughs> These little time agents are here. Not so fast time agents. Oh, we've got one more task to do. The portal is open. You can't stop us. You're out of time and so are we. So it looks like we've got one more task to do. We've got to use the chrono cannons. Wow, we haven't quite finished. So we're outside. And Rascal, if you haven't done last year's hour of code for 2021, the uh, time, is it called the time agents or timecraft? Timecraft. Yeah, do check that out. It's on the, uh, you can find it in the library as well. So uh, I'm not going to go through this one with you. I'll leave this this one for you to work out. Um, but we need to use the cannons in a certain order to uh, banish the time agents forever. I will. Uh, you might want to pause and try that yourself. And then hopefully you've had success. So that is the green path complete and a bonus uh, activity at the end. So quite a bit of thinking there. I'm going to leave a few questions for you to uh, think about. And I'm going to ask Andrew a couple of these, put him on the spot now. 
out of all the activities we've done so far, Andrew, what would you say was your favourite part of, of that challenge? Mm, well, two part. This is a two part answer. Firstly, I love the visualisations now. Like when I'm doing the Python coding, to actually see how the stairs increment themselves We're using the little glimmer is a huge advantage compared to using, you know, different coding platforms because uh, sometimes I just need a little bit of guidance. I can do the coding and I can do the typing, but I need to need to see my code. So the sparkles are great. And I love the new animations in Minecraft. You get sucked into the house, extra zombies coming into the kitchen to do some cooking. Yeah. Uh, the little touches make huge differences to keep me involved in coding. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks very much, Andrew. And you might want to uh, pause and go through those questions, but I'm just going to recap what we've done today. We've explored lots of different coding concepts and we've debugged faulty code. That was kind of the theme throughout today. We were given some code and we were debugging it. We were making changes. We were, in my case, copying and pasting. I find that quicker than typing. Some of you super fight fast typists might find it quicker just to just to rewrite it yourself. And we've thought about computational thinking, abstraction, pattern recognition, all of those things. So all of those things help you to become a great problem solver. So what I'm going to suggest is you can grab your certificate. If you click I'm finished at the end of the game, you can download your hour of code certificate. You may want to go back and do one of the other paths. There's a lot more challenges and a lot more things to explore. Certainly, if you want all 10 pages of the diary, you've got to go back and do the other paths. But that's it. So thanks very much for joining today. But wait, it doesn't have to stop here. There are lots and lots of um, resources online. So inside the library, you can go and access a whole load of Python coding inside Minecraft education. And there's also um, hundreds of computer science lessons as well. So for those people who signed up today, we'll send out this recording for you and we'll send out a whole load of links where you can go and get um, more information. So thanks very much for joining us for a live lesson. Uh, I've certainly enjoyed it um, and I hope you have too. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much, everybody. Enjoy your play and pause event. We'll see you very soon in the next one. Thank you so much, Stephen, for running such a great event as well.